would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over at the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. The idea of ice caves and ice tunnels is not new, nor is it unique to Antarctica. This is a picture from Iceland of an opening underneath a glacier that you can go down, and there are a lot of different connecting tunnels that you can explore. This one is from Antarctica. This one is from Alaska. And this one is from Sweden. So concept-wise, I don't think what we're exploring in Antarctica is something beyond the realm of believability, but in a recent article, something has come to light that I think puts a whole new perspective on this. Now, this is the National Post. Researchers find secret warm oasis beneath Antarctica's ice that could be home to undiscovered species. A study of the subglacial caves could reveal new undiscovered animal or plant species living comfortably due to the heat of an active volcano. Okay, we'll just go with that for now. But the description here is stunning because they talk about being able to walk around wearing just a t-shirt. And that's covered here in the third paragraph. You could wear a t-shirt in there and be pretty comfortable, lead researcher Sir Edwin Fraser said. There's light near the cave mouths and light filters deeper into some caves where the overlying ice is thin. And that's, of course, where we got that picture. Now, in today's video, I am going to continue to work around the uh, 3 o'clock region of Antarctica. We've been exploring up here in kind of the 2 o'clock region. But down here, there's, um, and I'll zoom in a little closer here so you can see a little better. Just beyond this little spit of land, there looks like a path into the center part where there's somewhat of a lower region, kind of a valley. And this is actually where I began my investigation so many months ago, because when I went here, I found some very old things. And so when we look at the map, um, perhaps uh, kind of bear with me on some of the labels. At that time, I didn't know what I was looking at. These were some of the first finds, and some of the labels are just a little generic and uh, not exactly accurate. But in that area, and of course, real quick, just for reference to say we did it, of course, here is 12 o'clock, the strip towards Argentina. When you work your way around to 3 o'clock, this is the area that faces Africa, and you can see that over here, South Africa and Madagascar. So right at about the 3 o'clock region, I actually found today a brand new, incredibly large tunnel and cable structure that runs 0 to 180, starting here and moving all the way in and ending right in the middle of these mountains. Now, how I found it was the interesting part. I looked at something that just seemed out of place, and I've labeled it subglacial tunnel. There was a just a slight imperceptible difference 
in the color here. And I'm going to try to turn the lights down, see if that helps at all. It re Well, that helps a little bit, I guess. You can kind of see the darker area here. It's a little bit harder to see, but where it ends, clearly they're covering something up. I don't even know what this is or why it would be here. But that it just cuts off is uh, it's telling. So as I was looking at that, there was a secondary line just, I guess, what it would be west of it. And it was running at a very odd angle, but when I traced that cable, or that tunnel, all the way out, it led directly down to this reference point where, and I'll zoom in real close so you can see it, the blue line, of course, is my reference line. It's right next to it. And it's very pronounced. In some areas, it's uh, much, much more pronounced. But you can even see it higher up. So this very well might be what is tied to that investigation, that they found different tunnel structures and different ways to get around under the ice down there. Um, if they have found a way to harness that volcanic heat, that energy, that would be a never-ending source of it. I think that they're just telling, like they do all the time, partial truths. That they have found this stuff, but they haven't disclosed the extent to which they have found this stuff and what they're doing with it. Now, over here, I found something very, very strange. And maybe you guys can help me out with it a little bit. When you look at this structure, this bowl, for lack of a better term here. It just seems out of place. If this is really rock down here, and this is snow or ice or whatever, how it was able to do this to the rock would have made you believe it was flowing to just create a, an edge like that on its own, but it's ice or snow. It just doesn't seem like this is uh, something that would have happened on its own. I could see lava doing this to rock, but I couldn't see snow. I couldn't see snow and ice creating this, uh, this type of a structure on the side of a mountain, no less. We found this one before, but we'll cover it again. Um, I had labeled this crashed embedded saucer because it's just... There's something here that is not either ice or snow. It's rectangular. It's got uh, two nodes on it. I do not know what this is, but it is uh, definitely something worth looking into, and I wish I had a picture of higher res. But when you look at the overall shape of the indentation in the snow, it's unmistakable what this is. And even from farther up, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Now over here, I found what looks just like a lone figure on the side of a mountain. And of course, the best way to look at it is at perspective. And it looks like it's this person now, it's going to look a little strange, but because from here it's like, well, how does that look like a lone person? You have to understand how the camera picks things up in 3D. It picks up the terrain, but not things on the terrain. Does that make sense? So while this looks like it's setting flat, a better perspective on this is this. That's what this would actually look like from a camera. And that's where you got to kind of be careful with what you're looking at and the angle at which you're looking at it. So I think you can see it a little better as we tilt the camera this way. And we'll zoom back in at a lower angle. Very, very difficult to do, get the camera just right on some of this stuff. There. 
Now you can see that this is clearly a path along the side of a mountain, and there's someone standing on that path. But I think that's what they're counting on. They're counting on you not taking the time to look at this stuff close and critically. This was one of the more stunning finds. This shadow. This ridge does not match up even remotely with this shadow. And you see this long, tall, clearly artificial structure here, and this is just a flat structure. And even if it were, it, this shape is diamond, this is completely different. So there was something here that they've attempted to morph the picture to hide. Because if people really did um, get enough evidence together about this, they wouldn't be able to hide it for long. And people would demand answers, but not enough people are looking into it. That's the problem. Now, sorting um, the new stuff from the old is going to take me a minute here. There's clearly evidence of paths, trails, and roads, ancient paths, trails, and roads, all through here. When you look at this, it's uh, exactly what you would expect to see. If this, of course, were at one time water, and they were, if it was not as advanced at the time. It looks like this would have been a way to go get fresh water, and here is evidence of what may be a cave back underneath the ice. Not sure why they would need to go to the surface for water, given that they would have it underneath, but... Um, the paths are there. I mean, it could have been, this could be evidence of, of a completely different time. There's a much larger one over here. The entire layout of this could have changed over the years, but those paths would have stayed the same. And these are some older, um, I was just going through really fast and wasn't even really caring about spelling at the time. These, I label them now HC, Hidden Corner. But at the time, I just guessed, you know, Hidden Building 7. This was like the very, very first video that I did. Some of the stuff I didn't even do videos on, because I just wasn't sure of what I was looking at. But there's cable structures all through here. And they show up in different ways, that's the thing. Um, people have made allegations that some kind of a satellite issue. Um, they show up like this, and as you can see, there's a break, and then it continues again. I don't think that's satellite. I mean, I don't think there's some hiccup with the imaging of the satellite that's causing this to just stop and start and stop and start. Either, you know, either it's in the imager or it's not. And I've also shown, let's see if I can find it, I know it's in the region. The very first cable structure I found actually runs right here, and I've shown this before, and I'll show it again. There is a structure right here that lines up perfectly with one of these things. I don't know what it is. I don't know what function it's playing, but it's in line with this, and they're too prevalent to be errors. And some of these were very hard to find. That's why I had to do multiple um, markers just to keep track of them. But a lot of them end up here. There's evidence here of a very large melt, some type of a heat event in this valley. And given everything, and I guess when you zoom out, you don't really, you have to zoom out, I should say, to see it. 
all of the different things that surround it and point right to it. And given that somebody has now written an article stating that there's areas down here under the ice that simply based on the volcanic activity, you can walk around in a t-shirt and that there might be plants and animals, the idea that that there could not be a civilization down there, given the magnitude of the space involved. I mean, we're talking hundreds of square kilometers. I mean, we're talking the size of U.S. states down here. That we could be investigating down there and they wouldn't even know about us. I doubt that's true, but with the space involved, I mean, it's uh, unlikely to my mind that there isn't some type of life or civilization down here. But I'll put some of the uh, more major locations down in the description so you can look at these for yourself. But um, it's everywhere down here. As you zoom out, you can see all the way around there is evidence of life. There's evidence of activity that uh, isn't natural, isn't normal, and is pointing to the fact that hopefully very soon there will be disclosure. But once again, National Post... Um, you could wear a t-shirt in there and be pretty comfortable talking about this oasis that's been found underneath the ice sheet in Antarctica. So, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time.